Hi guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. Um, so, a bit chilly, a bit windy, a bit cold and wet today, but we're in the workshop on Saturday morning. So here, <laughs> as you can see, I've got a great big piece of box section. Um, it measures, well it's 100 mil box, 100 by 100, 3 mil wall, and its overall length is, yeah, about 680. Uh, I've been skip diving and got it out of a scrap bin. Uh, I just brought it in, it's got a bit wet. I cleaned all the rubbish off with a um, flat wheel disc in the grinder. But that's got to be the support base for the mini lathe. Um, so back on the subject of the mini lathe, let me just uh, get that out of the way. Um, a motor came in that I ordered. Um, yeah, my mistake. Uh, I didn't quite realise how big a 750 watt three phase one horsepower motor was going to be. So uh, <laughs> I think overkill is the word I'm looking for. And this turns up. Um, it was a, it was dirt cheap uh, because it's got a bit of damage uh, on some of the fins. And I knew about that when I ordered it. Um, yeah, you can see it there, a little bit of damage on the fins, so it was uh, it was dirt cheap. I think we'll put this into reserve stock, and I've actually just ordered, instead of a one horsepower three-face ball pole, I've ordered a half horsepower um, eBay, not stupidly expensive, in fact it cost more than that one, because that one was dirt cheap, as I said. Um, yeah, about £70, something like that. Um, so I've also got around here somewhere, let me grab it, yes. I have got the, I'm not going to get it out of the box, but the inverter has arrived um, to transform my little 230 volts supply to the shed into the three phase that the motor's going to require. So that's uh, happy days. So we've got the bits and bobs. So once I get the motor in, I'll be able to design some sort of bracketry to for the belts and what have you to go to the head. Um, but I think the first thing I'm going to do is make up some of the bracketry that's going to go on this bit of box. Um, it's my steel box. I... <laughs> the reason I went for 100 mil is because I want to lift the lathe up a bit. When it sits on the bench, it's a little bit low and I'm bent over and, you know, a gentleman of my age wants to uh, protect his back a little bit. So I brought it up back into the sort of range where a little tiny lathe like this would be the most comfortable for me. Um, I'm going to make some brackets up to go on top of this that will pick up on the feet um, with the steel I got earlier. It's around here somewhere. Where is it? No, it's gone. It's around here somewhere. Anyway, I'm uh, not very well prepared today. So I'm going to make some brackets up, bits and bobs, to be able to not only stiffen up this box a bit, but have some welded on brackets on the top of the box, front and back, on the underside as well to pass into the bench or mount it on the bench and maybe some angular reinforcing on the sides. We'll make it up as we go along, as we normally do. Anyway, enjoy guys. Cheers now. So off camera, I've uh, fitted the block on the near side of the lathe. Uh, we did the back one in a previous video. Um, a little bit of fitting left to do yet. Yeah, it does work. Uh, it does slide the long length of the bed. A little bit tight at this end again. Yeah, fitting, uh, polishing, scraping, uh, filing, that sort of thing, to get it to be a nice running fit all along the length. Um, and I have had to do a little bit of doctoring of the underside of here where it's thicker this end than it is along most of it. But yeah, you know, we can get there. That's bench fitting, basically. So what I need to do uh, at this point, um, the carriage, the saddle, the carriage, the saddle, won't fit. Um, this block is too big, as you know, it's much bigger than the original. It needs to go sort of, well, obviously up to that height. And the wheel that runs on the rack here um, is fouling. So I'm going to need a, a cutout in the block in this area. Um, I will work it out where it is. But in this area here, we need a cutout to allow the wheel to pass through to pick up with the rack. Um, I have checked the rack. Here we are, that's the rack, the original rack, and it does fit underneath there, so happy days. So we're going to have to cut a chunk out of that, so I think that's the first thing we're going to do, is get that bit right, and then we'll look at making the brackets for the box, for all of this to sit on top of the box. I just worked out the position of the cutout, so what it needs is, from the end of the brass, 24 mil in from the end, and 17 from the back, it needs a 17 diameter hole to clear. Um, I'm not going to make life difficult for myself, so if I cut 
a cutout in the block. I mean, I could re just reduce the thickness, but I want to keep a bit of bulk in there. Um, so 15 and a half, I need a face. Eight and a half wall there across, back down 17 mil wide. Um, we'll use a cutter for that. Um, what should we use? Uh, shall I do it on the end leave square corners or shall I come in from the side and use something like an 8mm cutter so we got a rad in the corners? Probably do it on the side so we got a rad. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take the block back off the, the uh, cross light, put it in the vise and we're going to cut this slot out and we'll end up having uh, sort of 4mm radius in the corner here. Happy with that. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. So as it happened, I had a 16 diameter cutter in the, in the collet anyway. So I set it on zero, about centre of where the hole's going to be, um, and basically just uh, I've stepped off the edge of the block from that zero point, and I'm just pecking it out with that 16 mil cutter, bringing the part towards me in Y, um, just to remove the bulk of the material, and then I'll go an extra half mil, so that would be the equivalent clearance on a 17 cutter and then step back and forward and wind in and out so that the slot width is uh, 17 mil, half mil either way and that should give me the clearance I'm looking for so yeah I'm just packing it out I'll bring it back when we get to the centre point I just tried to put it, offer it up together on the block and it was all a bit fitty so I've opened it all up now to a sort of 19 mil hole so there's plenty of clearance in there now there's no need for it to be as fitty as I had it so yeah um, why make life difficult for yourself so I got this point just stick it back together just chucked a couple of bolts in just to make sure we're all clear and yep that now sits flat in its position and the lead nuts will still activate in and out so there's a good chance that that's going to be clearance everywhere it needs so, I, ugh, I need to clean that, it's still stinking dirty. Um, so yeah, that's the cutout in there. Um, I think, I think, do I need to count up all these bolts? I don't need to, there's no purpose, no reason to do it. Uh, they're the right length of they stand, as they stand. So I think these ones I'm just going to leave, let's just put the third one in the hole. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to count to sink these bolts, I'll just leave them as they are. So, my thinking is, uh, we have this fairly rigid piece of box action, um, which, okay, might not be flat and all the rest of it as it stands at the moment. I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of this 10mm plate, 10 by, what is it? Uh, i got a rule here somewhere. I don't even know what plate i got. Uh, 10 by 60. So I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of this, the width of the box, and weld it in position on the end here. The same up the other end. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, you can. Same on the other end, cut a piece that fits underneath the original bolting holes. I'm probably going to open these up to M8s. Um, so these two will be welded on, uh, round the outside, across the top, everywhere, all welded into position. Um, on the underside then, uh, a slightly longer piece of plate, 20 mil stick out either side, 140. So two pieces of plate, 140 long. And they'll have some tapped holes in to screw some rubber feet into. So the unit will sit on rubber feet on the bench, which isn't flat. Okay. So once I've welded them all in place, got all the tap holes done, all the rest of it, well, may do the tap holes afterwards, I'm going to machine off these top two in one plane. Um, the bottoms won't matter. Um, they don't, really don't need machining, but machine off the top two in one plane so that when I bolt the lathe bed onto the top of this, on top of these plates, they're not biasing or influencing the bed, trying to twist it at all, so that it's one flat plane. That's the idea. So we've got a nice flat surface, you know, these two machined as one in one flat plane. Maybe some raised pillars either side of the feet uh, with a cutout in the centre, so I've only got four pads that it sits on where it's bolted down. Um, I'll think about that as I do it or as I get to that point um, but yeah so that I know the bed is good as it stands I know the bottom of this bed is good to the top um, you know this top is flat it sits lovely on my milling table which is the only reference I've got um, and the bottom is machined all flat and square to that so if it's sitting on a flat surface 
the reinforcing, shall we call it, base shouldn't bias the bed at all. Clamp it all down. Jobs are good and sit on rubber feet so the bench doesn't influence anything else. Jobs are good and it's there. Um, I realise it's quite bulky, but it has raised it up to a height where my chuck is going to be a nice height for doing small work. Never going to use this machine wet. Uh, maybe a bit of cutting compound or what have you, but never any coolant or any suds or what have you. So, yeah, that's the way I'm going to go. Now, I do realise there are several other ways I could have done this. Um, you know, making out of a solid inch plate or something like that to stiffen it all up. But it's expensive material, and this is what I had lying about. Uh, found, salvaged, um, skip dive for. So, that's what I'm going to use. So I cut the four pieces off with a grinder. Sorry, I lost a bit of sound there. Uh, I cut the four pieces off with a grinder, you know, oversized three or four mil. So I'm just going to square up one end on all of them. So I'll take all four, do exactly the same as I've done with that one, and square up one end, deburr, and then we'll come to the other end. Clean up. Half a mil cut. A measure where I am now. These want to be 100 mil. 101.85. So I'll just set a zero. So 1.85. Let's take a mil off. That's one. Okay. That was bad. Um, you can probably see I was getting blue chips off that. Pretty much means I'm overdoing it. So yeah, not good. If you're getting blue chips on a on a high-speed steel cutter, it's not good. So he's off a little. Yeah, I could have got away with putting some coolant on. Get nasty rattling noises, and I know where it is.
Anyway, uh, 0.5 to come off. Um, yeah, let me show. I'll, I'll move the camera up and I'll show you where that nasty rattle's coming from. So up on top of the lathe here, we've got this cover. Uh, there is an interlock switch. I've got a bit of tape on it because it pops open sometimes, but... You hear the rattle? And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just horrible vibrating noises when you're milling, especially when you're, you know, doing something like this. So point two to come off. Let's finish it off. So you can see the sort of thing i got in mind now. Um, I've just placed the headstock and the saddle back on. Um, the spacers are underneath the bed that are going to be welded to the box. And you can see there on the right-hand side by the milling uh, table handle, um, the plate that's going to go on the underside. So I think I'm going to weld it all up, machine it, and then do the drilling. Um, I haven't got a welder here in the shed, which is just as well, it being a wooden shed. Um, but I do have a rather nice 300 amp MIG welder in work. Um, so I suppose, well, it's only a 10 minute job to weld those on. So that will get done at some point this coming week. Um, I'll chuck the bits in the boot of the car. I'll mark out where the top plates are going to be welded and then we can put the holes into suit after they're all located in position. So that's where we are with the base. So I suppose I better clean this up. Um, Alan Key, let's thread dial indicator. We don't need that. We're not going to be threading on it. Uh, what size Alan Key? Where's in that one? Come on, there you are. I've already got it out. I uh, went for the easy option and grabbed the one I thought it was out the rack. So we don't need that at all. So that's gone. Right, okay, in the box of tricks. Don't need that, don't want that. Um, that just lifts off, leaving a pin in there. That needs a good clean, which will sort that out. Um, so, let's have a look. Uh, some small Allen keys down in there, grub screws. Let's have a look. That looks appropriate. It is, we'll have that out of there. Don't know how this works, how it comes apart. We're just... Uh, We'll work that out now. <laughs> Nothing hiding under there. No screw in there at all. Is it meant to be? Don't know. Um, right, okay. So I'm guessing we need a small spanner. There's another grub screw on the top. So what is it? What does it look like? Eight, it looks like. Uh, no, it's not an eight. I bet it's a seven, which is a spanner I haven't got in the rack. I do have it adjustable. It is. Okay, um, don't like using adjustable spanners. I've got a 7mm spanner, but I haven't got one on the rack. It's uh, that rare that it gets used to 7 for me. See, can't see the hole, so I couldn't gauge the size. So we'll have that grub screw out of there with its little locking nut. I guess that's to stop as to how far it engages so you don't over tighten. So we'll have a play with that at a later date with the lead screw loose to get that right. Gosh, there's some muck. Oh, that's a long old grub screw. Okay. So that still activates like that. There's a key in here. Another grub screw in there. I guess that's holding the key. Um I think that's the smallest Allen key I've got, is it? Well, in uh, the T-handle ones, yeah, it's not that. Okay, so a set of Allen keys lurking here somewhere with some smaller ones. What have I done with that? Oh, I'm not very organised again today. Let me get a Phillips screwdriver and we'll undo the two keeps. That's a bit shoddy, that setup. Um, so I'll have to wander across the shed. Grab one, that'll do it, I'm sure. It wasn't the one I usually go for, but uh, it's the first one that I spotted in the drawer. So we'll have those out. 
key. Ooh, so that's what holds that key down by the look of it. Or that, um, should we call it a gib? I don't know. Yeah, that's not very good. We might have to make something a bit more appropriate for that. Give us a better guide. Um, I need to find the small Allen keys. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. So, where are we on the other side here? Um, okay, grub screw in there. So that should come off. That one. Yeah, we're getting better at this. <laughs> better on our guesstimation. So, we'll have that out of there. I'm guessing. Yep, that just comes off. Um, right, so that can stay there for the moment. Right hand wheel. Is there a grub screw in there? There is. Same size. Rounded grub screw. Let's go where I can see it. Let's use not the ball end. We got him. We'll have that screw out of there. Throw it on the floor. Is there two in it? No. That's quite well fitted onto there. I wonder if it's screwed on. I got grub screws falling all over my floor. Let me get those bits off the floor before I lose them and there's a ball bearing just falling on the floor as well. So that's another thing I'll have to uh, have a look at. Okay so the uh, the hand wheel did just pull off there with a bit of persuasion. Um, so that pin looks pressed into there. I'm not going to mess with that at this stage. Um, ah! Right, well the reason why they didn't come out with an Allen key, those two screws in that end, uh, were their screwdriver slots in them. Are they? They are, so I need to find a small screwdriver now. Not very organised guys, I was supposed to be organised this year with all the tools. But we're doing it on the fly. So, small screwdriver at hand. We'll pull that grub screw out of there. Put him to one side. There's another one there. We just will have that out while we're at it. And there's another one in the top. Have I already had that? No. Not so three. Well, these are like gib screws, uh, gib adjusters. That's what they seem to be doing. Okay. So that gib will now come over there. It's got three holes in it. Right, okay. Um, and they just fall out. Okay. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> right. So then that, which has uh, got a little burr on it. I'm not going to pop it through there. I'm going to remove that burr first. I can feel it uh, binding as I'm pushing it off. That's just... Uh, Just stone it over. Now it'll come out. Didn't want to knock that through in case it scored the hole. So there's a little. Uh, well, that's quite a clever design, isn't it? Oh, didn't show it. <laughs> yeah, it's, as you rotate it, obviously pulls the two jaws together. Ah. Okay, I've not had one of those apart before. Um, so what's left? Um, oh, that just popped out of there. That washer in there. Spacer, no, nope, nothing in there. Again, ugh, grimy. Ugh. Um, am I going to drift that pin out? Can't see any grub screws. Let's pop it on there. Let's see if I can find an appropriate punch. And we'll see if I can punch that out of there. Right. Now I had a tidy up a little while ago and I, all my punches were on an old shelf on this side of the workshop, that side. And I put them somewhere else and I can't remember, I put them all together in one place. Can't remember for the life of me where so I'm going to have to have a look. I couldn't find my punch but I found an appropriate piece of steel. Um, it's tight, I've just given it a tap, it's moved. Here she goes. And that's that pin out. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's the spindle pin for the uh, with the uh, wheel runs on. Okay. Right. Um, let's just check. Any more screws lurking around in there? No, that's it. So uh, that is now ready for the big cleanup and all the other little bits as well. So I just sprayed on this uh, well, Halford's engine and parts degreaser. Um, <laughs> well, it's all right. Uh, I quite often use brake cleaner for degunking stuff, but uh, I have got some here. But in the shed here, it can get a bit heavy in the air, you know. <laughs> I'll be floating around in the ceiling of the shed. So, uh, yeah, this stuff's not quite so nasty on the lungs. So we'll just give it a once over with this and a small brush first. Just get rid of the worst. So, I've got a parts washer. Got one in work. Uh, but, nah. <laughs> For what it takes to do it with this. A little bit of elbow grease. Get rid of the worst of the oily gunge off it first. And then we get some paper towel. Yeah, there's aluminium flakes everywhere on this. So yeah, gunky down there. We'll I think we're gonna take all the paint off this as well. Because I do not like the red. Ugh. Ugh. More gunge. a brush on here really but we're not going mad I don't want a sticker right okay Ugh. There's lots of scratches and gouges and god knows what in it um so last time I had a big scratch over with a Stanley blade, but I think Let's see what we can get this paint off with What do we reckon what would we use? I'm not going to use a paint stripper again because horrible smells in the shed here yeah? I think we'll do it manually Should scratch off all right. Let's see what I can find to scratch it off with Oh, so, yeah, just a, a screwdriver on the surface Does the job, gets rid of the worst of it, and then we'll go over it with a Stanley blade after. Once I've uh, done the heavier bit, it just flakes away as you can see. Boy racer going up the road in his motor vehicle, everywhere at 7,000 rpm. I don't know whether you can pick him up on the camera. <laughs> Might have been a bike, I suppose. Sounded more like a, a car with all the baffles taken out the exhaust or straight through pipe. Why do I could talk? I, uh, I've got a Miltec on my car. Miltec exhaust, um, stainless steel, which uh, isn't loud. <laughs> well, it is if you go up in the RPMs a bit, but, but for cruising round, that's a bike. I'm sure you hear that. Around the other way. Okay, so that's ready for a Stanley knife. So I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm going to go around all the outside everywhere, scrape all the paint down to this sort of standard, and then uh, we'll scratch the rest off with a Stanley knife. Maybe a bit wet and dry, and we'll just clean it all up. What I do find surprising is that the mating surface where it bolts onto the underside of the carriage they've painted it 
So you're never going to get a good solid contact when it's, well, sort of thick paint this side, thin paint that side, all sorts of lumps and bumps. Yeah, it's just, you know, I suppose with a mini lathe, you've got to consider it as a project from out of the box. Um, I'm not the first to have said that. You know, it's a kit. Um, <laughs> you've got to make it work, which pretty much is what we're doing here. But uh, all right, I'm not just doing the fit inside and keeping it a standard. I'm going to do a little bit more, as you've already seen. But uh, yeah, I suppose that's my view on it. But as a basic design, you know, it's there. It's just not very well executed. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's my opinion on that. So ten minutes later, uh, we got all the paint off. I've just uh, run a file over the edges. It was all sorts. This is all shapes, um, but we've got it somewhere near flat. Um, the only bit that's not in mid-air is this space. Um, and obviously there's a bit of work to do down in here uh, with the dovetails run. But um, yeah, uh, it's, it's flatter. <laughs> And I got a better chance of it uh, fitting up now in position, at least clamping somewhat securely uh, without being sat on paint. Uh, that's probably why it wasn't that tight. Probably over the period of years with it vibrating and the paint had cracked and, you know, compressed underneath and that's where the bolts were loose. So, yeah, I'm going to carry on cleaning up this stuff uh, and then look at what's needed, um, you know, to make it work as I want it to work. Completely off subject, um, these things, Swarfiga hand wipes, uh, obviously I haven't got a sink here in the shed, but these things, uh, you know, my hands are grimy and covered in all sorts of uh, aluminium dust and muck and God knows what oily stuff, um, when you're trying to clean something and your hands are stinking, it's never very good, um, so now that I've got the worst of the muck off that, we'll uh, just give the hands a once over. Um, you don't want to go eating a sandwich with hands like that, not that I'm going to be eating a sandwich. <laughs> I would wash my hands. But, um, but just getting rid of the basics of the grime, as you can see, it's all on the cloth. Um, and yeah, I mean, they, well, they're not clean, but it's got rid of the, the muck off them. So yeah, I like these things in the shed, and I probably had this pot, don't know how many's in there, um, Halfords I think I bought it from. Um, it's quite a few because I've been using it for probably 18 months, two years I've been using these, never shown them before. And they're still going and there's still a fair few in there. So, yeah, uh, handy, you know, if you've got them in a, I don't know, in your van or whatever, these things are good. Not sponsored in any way. Um, so it's Sunday morning now, back from the rugby. Thankfully, Wales won. Um, sorry, Scotland. Uh, so, anyway, that said... Um, I often get asked where did I buy my stop, um, which I suppose is a compliment in many ways because I made this uh, a few months ago, regular viewers will know. A uh, particular viewer, a fellow YouTuber, Matty in Australia, hiya Matty, has asked if I could do a set of draw, if I had a set of drawings for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I made it up as I went along, so I didn't never had any drawings, so I didn't have anything uh, sketched down or anything. So I'll just whip it to bits. Um, and just give them an overview of what it is and how it works and the dimension I, the dimensions I've used um, so yeah base plate um, okay let's use a bit of hindsight here if I were to make it again would I make it different yes I would so um, yeah it all works on a t-nut in the t-slot okay so I made a t-nut um, piece of plate bolted down I did make a little stepped washer, um, there's no need for that, um, that fits in there, I think it's because I put too big a hole in, uh, I was thinking of a 10mm bolt, um, but I keep the 6mm Allen key around more often, so I went down to 8mm, that's why I made that, so if I were to make it differently, what would I have done, um, okay, the range, table wise, without moving slot, um, I'd have made these centres bigger, so the centres as they stand are... We'll, we'll talk metric in this, 35 mil, uh, probably 60 mil centers I would have gone. So I've got an M8 there, that could be just an M8 hole. Um, as I said, I'd have gone 60 mil centers and that's an M6 bolt. And in my case, that is, let's call it 38, 40 mil long stuck out. Piece of 10 mil plate. Um, it's approximately, I don't know, 27 mil on the end there. 
and it's 40 mil on that end so yeah I would have made it a bit longer so next piece again piece of aluminium overall thickness 10 mil um, diameter to suit whatever you put on the end of here or put on the end of here whatever you make this diameter on that 28 mil this radius in here uh, that's just a clearance hole on the stud this radius in here matches whatever we put on the end of here so let me just take out the uh, it's a bit grimy where I've been using it take out the little barrel nut so let's strip this to bits okay so again piece of aluminium I've used um, well it's finished up sort of 19 mil by 20 mil that sort of idea um, it's 25 across here is it yeah it's 25 so this radius in here was 25 mil um, and as you can see it matches that radius and that will turn with this so I stepped it down on the one side rather than leaving it parallel so that it would come down more flush if I were to make it again I'd make it longer I'd probably make it maybe 40 mil longer so centers on this are let's say there's 68 yeah maybe I'd have made the centers for the two holes 100 mil made this part a lot longer so it steps down 20 there 25 there basically it was you know just squared up and done on a rotary table those of you that saw that's bored out um, not important as long as your little barrel nut so uh, well it's not a barrel nut it's a rotating barrel so a piece of brass this could be steel you know you can make it out of any material you like really um, with a flat on one side so that when the nut comes down it's uh, running on a flat surface okay when the clamp in nut so basically the principle is that fits through there there's a bit of grit in there sits on top of there and as you can see it rotates freely the nut pushes down on the brass which pulls the bottom up locks this piece locks this piece and wherever you put it is where it stays and basically I put an elongated nut on to give me myself a bit of clearance again what I would have done in hindsight is I'd have as you can imagine the angle here I'd have gone up a bit steeper and relieved it a bit more there um, just so that it can come up higher but making the arm longer would do the same thing would give you more height um, again you can scale this up scale it down to suit your particular machine um, so yeah uh, let's just I'll tell you what I'll do where is Alan key let me just screw that to the table down into the nut I mean, I could have put a hand wheel on here as well, or a, a thumb knob like these on here. Um, I suppose I should have, really. <laughs> but, yeah, when I lock that, it's it's rock solid. You know, and if I want it particularly solid, but it is. You know, I can't get it to move, but if I really bump on it, but it's, it's you know, it's pretty firm. Uh, so the final bits... Um, obviously simple part um, scriber straight diameter I think this is quarter silver steel my piece is four and a half inch long you can make it as long or as short as you want I put a pointed small radius on one end and like a full radius on the other um, this part basically just a stepped bolt with a hole through it then there's a brass bush which fits over the outside now when I made this I made them without the holes so when that clamps up there that comes flush um, so when you put it in the best thing to do is leave the hole out put it in position get it vertical then drill the hole down to through the brass and the bolt at the same time and then when you're done you can take the brass bush off and just skim half a mil off this shoulder so that when I don't know whether I can show this when it clamps up it goes that bit beyond so that's the clamping bit where it misaligns the two sets of holes and it clamps on the bar. So I don't think I got this when I made it right smack bang in the middle. So it'll only go one way. Okay, let's rotate that 180. That's the way. So yeah, I mean, basically the rod will slide in and out. But when you exert pressure of the pushing the brass up, it locks it in position. So that's the, the method on that. I mean, it will go in this way. 
um, and if I need to move it over it will go in this way as well doesn't matter really um, again a little step bush in the back um, one of the important things is obviously the shoulder of this bolt needs to be back from this surface so when you do up the nut it actually clamps it you are not bottoming out um, so I've got a little spacer in there which fits in there nicely just turned to the same diameter could be any diameter you like again this is M6 uh, that all fits in there I can lock it up I can bring him up in the air that's as high as it goes with mine which is high enough for my use um, so what height have I got got about 75 mil high 70 75 mil high obviously I can bring it higher by you know bringing the pin out further but I would have made this longer maybe out here and that would have given me more height in a square plane but you know for my purposes um, it's absolutely fine so yeah that's my little stop uh, I hope that information has helped diameter of that is sort of 12 mil inside the bush you know maybe two and a half mil wall something like that um, deep enough to get the quarter pin in I mean yeah it, it's all basic stuff and it can be adapted you know in several ways I mean this that's the maximum height as I said I'd like to scallop a bit more of that so that it'll swing up a bit more until the underside of this nuts nearly touching maybe um, but yeah that's it um, you know obviously you can make things pretty by making them out of brass and aluminium and stainless steel which this one is but it could be it could be all steel it, it doesn't really matter it's whatever you got lying about and it does the job so I hope you found that useful Matty um, there's the there's the dimensions for you um, you can put as much or as little time you know whoever's watching into this as you like I mean, you know, all the outsides can be rough sawn, you know. The only bits are the moving parts which have got any degree of accuracy, really. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I use it a lot now. Um, I used to clamp bits of block onto the bed, you know, all sorts. I'd, I'd clamp the one, two, three blocks as a stop. I'd do all sorts. But this this is quite versatile and it's, uh, it's not let me down yet, so I'm happy with it. So I'll be popping the base of the uh, lathe into work this week and getting it welded then uh, we can start machining that next week. So at this point I think that's about it for this week guys. As usual thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.